Here's the thing that's powerful about the wood chips. This just shows you the, the, the nature of the father. His economics are so cool. You see this pasture out here with the sheep in it? This is an acre and a quarter pasture. An acre and a quarter. Yeah, pull up the sheep and watch them enjoy that. They'll love it. An acre and a quarter will support five sheep. That's what the books say, the scientific books. Five sheep. It, it takes an acre and a quarter. That's all, they can, that's all, all, all that you can raise on it. Two years ago, a farmer brought 53 adult sheep onto my acre and a quarter pasture in June. And this acre and a quarter doesn't get fertilizer or, or, or water, nothing. It's just on its own. 53 on an acre and a quarter. He brought them here because on his 25 acres, they're eating the grass down to the ground and he wanted to get it back, so he wanted to reseed and, and water and fertilize and get his grass back. He says, I'll probably have them there for a month. They'll have your grass down, but it'll give me time to reseed and get mine up. He didn't take them out till October and then we got my grass down. What really blew his mind, he called me to tell me, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a good shepherd, he cared about his sheep, he's coming out every week to see how they're doing. He decided to call you. Every time I come to your place, my sheep are laying down. I have been raising sheep for 30 years, and I have never seen my sheep in the day lay down. They're on their feet all day long eating, and at night they lay down. And me the Holy Spirit gave me Psalm 23. He lays them down in green pastures. I says, the reason your sheep are laying down is because they're satisfied. Mm -hmm. They're satisfied. They have mineral rich grass. They don't need to eat as much. That's why 53 and acre quarter can't get it down. And they're laying down because they're satisfied. On your place with chemical fertilizers, mm -hmm. they're never satisfied. There's no minerals in the grass. And they're totally hungry all day long because they're never satisfied. I'm just loving these things I'm seeing. And so when I came here 35 years ago, we had this barns here because my kids had horses. You could walk through this pasture. Grass is four feet tall with no resistance because it was so thin. Today, if you walk through there, it'll trip you because it's so thick. And here's what's happened. I didn't make that happen. I didn't do it. If you look, I'm on a grade. There's a slight slope here. Hmm. Underneath this soil, six inches is blue clay. Are you hearing me? Blue clay. Well, nothing penetrates blue clay. So when all this mineral-rich compost tea hits blue clay, you know where it goes? Gravity sends it down there. And so for all these years, this has been gravity fed from, from this, and all that's happening at that level. And you know what I love about God? Now, now let's start doing the math here. Here, this is all free. Everything about God is free and sets free, and so everything in nature is free. This free material is feeding all of these trees, all this produce, and has enough excess to do that entire pasture, and I put nothing here for 16, for 14 years. Connect the dots, do the math. This is huge. I mean, really huge. Huge. And it costs me nothing up front. This stuff's free. Are you getting why science and the human race won't attach to this? There's no money in it. You can't make anything. <laughs> I'm serious. The whole the whole motive of all agriculture, all, all of science, all allopathic medicine is all about money. Bar none. Across the street is a really cool guy. He's a, he's, a, he's a medical doctor. And he's honest. He says allopathic medicine was never designed to bring healing. It was created to maintain disease. Because hmm. you can't make money on healing. If people get well, you never come back. And so allopathic medicine keeps you sick and has you coming back to maintain your illness. You know what's so cool about him? Women, women bring their kids to him that have, have asthma, um, bronchitis. He just tells them, Get them off wheat and dairy. They'll be fine. And so they said, well, you're not going to give us a prescription. I just gave you one. <laughs> you got a prescription. Get them off of wheat. And they come back and few the kids totally well. They're yeah. shocked. Yeah. Simple adjusting their lifestyle, yeah. not eating dead, corrupted food, you get well. Mm -hmm. Dairy is corrupted. All animals are fed antibiotics. You know, you know why, why everybody's sick today? Why your immune system doesn't work? Why you have no gut flora? Why you have no this? All the dairy products you're eating have antibiotics and that's taking out your whole gut flora, destroying mm -hmm. all your good bacteria in your gut. I'm just telling you, man, what they're doing to us is criminal. And we keep buying this trash and eating it and staying sick and don't know why. Wheat is no longer wheat. Mm. Remember our anthem in this country? Amber waves of grain. Wheat used to grow four and five feet tall. Today it's a foot tall. Mm. It's been genetically modified. And it's not the same. When I was a kid, when the old people, you never heard of gluten. The word did not exist. Because it wasn't in wheat. It wasn't there. 
Today, it's in all this nasty stuff they're making. We're all sick and we wonder why. Well, it's been altered. It's been changed. For convenience and for money and to maintain your illness. I like what you told me about kale, how it goes in your tissue and actually heals. Kale, kale is the most, you know, anti, antioxidants. Everybody know antioxidants are in fruits and vegetables. They'll take out free radicals that cause cancer. Free radicals cause cancer. Antioxidants will take them out. That's how they create a native. But once the, once the free radical penetrates the cell wall and gets inside the cell, antioxidants can't get it because they can't break the cell wall. But kale, this amazing food that I created, the phytochemicals in kale literally go into the cell and eat out, consume the free radical. I'm just telling you, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. And when we talk about kale, let me share with you the stupid lie you got in school. Remember they taught you in school there's four basic food groups? Everybody nod your head. You've heard that before. Mm -hmm. How stupid. You know, the creator in the first chapter of the, of the owner's manual, the first chapter of the manual, and he prefaces, and God said, vegetables and fruits and their seeds is what I give to your food. He says there's two food groups. Two food groups. You know what's so interesting about how they erased our brains? Track with me. The animals that are producing the protein that you think you're getting never eat meat. And they're bigger, have more muscle mass, a lot stronger, have much bigger bones. They're eating no milk. How do they maintain that structure? How do they maintain that, that incredible power? Grass and water. Grass and water. Excuse me? You'll know the answer up front, but I'm just going to give it to you. Which has the most protein? Bison, buffalo meat, or kale? 50% more is in the kale. 50% more. And what's interesting is the, is the protein in the, in the bison you, is, bio, is not bioavailable because you can't digest that stuff. Let's talk about meat. Initially, the creator never had anything eating meat that came after the, after the flood when there's no, nothing else growing, so you had to. In the next thousand years, when he shows up, even the lion will lie down with the lamb, so nothing's even predators aren't eating it because it's never by design. Let's be real about meat. What is meat? Define it. It's a dead carcass. Mm -hmm. Really, it's a dead carcass. And then to make it so you can chew it, they hang it for a period of time so it rots and becomes tender to eat. Then after you eat the dead rotten carcass, what do you do? You sit down and rest because you're really tired. Because all the blood is gone to your intestines to try to break down this dead rotten carcass, which is really hard to do. And when you defecate, it comes out black and hard and stinks. Mm -hmm. I mean, excuse me? <laughs> this just doesn't sound good. Sounds like you're a vegetarian. <laughs> I eat meat occasionally. I go to someone's house and they have it. I, I eat it and give thanks for it on, 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 on um, Passover. I eat lamb, but I, don't, I never buy it. I will never eat it. I'll never get it for myself because it's just, it's not good. We weren't created for it. It's just, and there's nothing it has we need. And what amazes me, I tell you, you gotta get a B12. You won't get a B12 for anything, anything but meat. Mm -hmm. I'm a veteran, I can't walk because of Vietnam. And so the veteran, they, I make me go to the veteran's hospital and get my a, a stupid physical every year. I'm not going to go to more because this is a waste of time. And they do blood work. And the first question they ask you when they do blood work is, what drugs are you taking? Everybody track with me? So I get him angry and I says, I'm not drug deficient. I don't take drugs. <laughs> so that kind of gets them, you know, going. <laughs> and they say, what vitamins are you taking? I don't take vitamins, I eat live food. Vitamins are originally came in food. And all the stuff you're selling as vitamins aren't vitamins, it's a synthetic garbage copy, but they're not vitamins. And so they're really angry now. And so looking at my bubble and the key coming back says, excuse me, you said you're not taking vitamins? I don't take vitamins. Well, your blood level is over the top and your B12 is there. And they're just, they're shocked at the results. And it says, it just shows you, you, you don't have a brain. Everything in nature, every animal, every living being except us is really healthy in good shape because they eat food fresh in season. I eat food fresh in season. Duh! This is not rocket science and it shouldn't surprise you my blood's good. You know, 65, my, my blood pressure is 117 over 70. You know, I never get sick. I never get sick. I'm not tired. I'm thinking like, this is how it's supposed to be. This whole idea of getting old and decrepit is unnatural. Can I give you the word? The word says, as your days, so shall your strength be. You should be as strong when you check out as when you came in. 
Look at, look at the examples in the scripture. Here old Moses, 120 years old. 120. His eyes were like an eagle. He could see everything. Total strength. Good old Joshua and Caleb had to wait 40 years for those unbelievers to die off and at 80 years old, give me that mount, I'm ready for it. They were, they were totally powerful at 80 years old. Not tired. They're ready to start a new life. I'm just telling you how we're living and what we're experiencing is not normal. It's not natural. It's a complete ripoff from a diabolical system that's lied to us that we believe. And I'm just telling you, it can all change. You can start eating live food and bring it all back. It's powerful. I've done it. When I was 40 years old, and buying stuff in the store, I was in severe pain. My back and legs just ached all the time. And when you're in pain, you're dragged to be around because you're uptight. You're just mad. You're just in pain. It hurts. And you, re you reflect that. And I'm taking naps on my way home, my, on my, way home my truck from work because I'm tired. But thank God I have, he has the guardian angels to watch out for me because I'm, I'm <laughs> dropping off. I'm sleeping, you know. Wow. And um, my, my, wife, my wife got this book that I read that really arrested my attention. The title was Alkalize or Die. That's direct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I read it, and he made this statement that really got my, got my attention. He says, all pain, all pain, all disease comes from an acid condition in your body. Hmm. So I told my wife, I says, you know what, I can test that. That's an incredible statement, man, and if it's true, I'm going there. So I came home and I ate nothing except what I grew in my garden season. I have been pain-free for 24 years. Totally pain-free. And I love it. Mm -hmm. It's just awesome. And I'm kind of sensing this is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The Creator is a good Creator. His essence is love. He didn't make us to live in pain. It's not by design. It's not by design. It's from an acid condition. If you, try, if you do the math and look at stuff, all processed foods are acid. All of them. Come on, man. Connect the dots. Mm -hmm. When you're eating this stuff, this alkalizing food, you just can't get sick. It's impossible. It's impossible to get sick if you eat this kind of food. It can't happen. You mean around people sneezing and coughing, flu all the flus is just hang out with them. I'm not going to get you because your immune system works. You can see the, and see the fallacy of the whole allop allopathic medicine is they believe pastures lie. Pasture said that disease comes from pathogens and bugs. That's a lie. So when you have an operative immune system, pathogens and bugs are no threat to your body. Your immune system handles them. They're no problem. It just shuts them down. Kills them because it, that's how it works. And so the whole mentality is to take out pathogens and, and, and bugs instead of maintaining the, the immune system. And it's backwards. It's totally backwards and it's expensive. And what amazes me as intelligent beings, ever, ever, bought, ever bought a prescription drug and ever looked at the package insert? You got one line of the benefits, paragraphs <laughs> of side effects ranging from nausea to dizziness to, to blindness to death. Yeah. And people are buying this stuff? Mm -hmm. I mean, what happened to our brains? I mean, whatever you have doesn't approach blindness <laughs> and death. <laughs> you know, and you're buying this stupid thing to get over this other thing? You know what's so pathetic about all, all the allopathic drugs? Everything they have in allopathic synthetic drugs was created in nature by God as herbs, as living material. They couldn't, they couldn't sell, and so they synthesized it so they can sell to you. Read the word. What does the word say? He created leaves for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. God created all these living organisms, all these amazing plants, these herbs, for total healing of the human body. And none are toxic, none have side effects, and they're all free. Are you starting to connect the dots and realize what's going on? This is significant. We've got to get it. We have an adversary, and he doesn't like us. And we've got to pay attention.